There are many challenges that women face when they are diagnosed with mitral valve disease. First of all, mitral valve prolapse, which is the most common cause of mitral valve regurgitation, affects women much more than men. Secondly, women are often diagnosed much later in the course of their disease and are offered treatments much later. This means they often have worse outcomes than men even after treatment of mitral valve disease. For example, the national guidelines for the threshold for intervening on mitral valve disease is often based on the size of the heart. Unfortunately, these size criteria were developed using data mainly from men. So when we use the same criteria for women for indication of treatment, they often have worse outcomes because their disease is much more advanced when treated. Therefore, I encourage women to go to their cardiologist when they're having symptoms, especially shortness of breath, or they have been told that they have a heart murmur. Treating mitral valve disease in women requires that we consider not only the mitral valve itself, but also the life stage of the patient and their general health. We want to repair the mitral valve as much as we can, especially for women of childbearing ages, because this preserves a heart function is much more beneficial for the patient's long term.